support and this is us so I believe that um, I believe it's gonna continue to grow you know um, so far he Rodney did a good job with everything I think it's gonna grow and I think that's something that we need anyway because there's nothing here for us so I just think that uh, doing this, th this is what we need. And then it'll bring a lot of people together, not only black people, but you know, Caucasians, Mexicans, whoever, so they can see our culture. They can see, you know, what we have been through, what we, you know, have done to be better. So I think we need this. All right. I know that many of you don't know that there were 94 black students here in Oshkosh in 1968. We were uh, recruited to come here because we were promised a good financial aid packet, accommodations, a good school uh, to come to. But when we came, we found out that the school was not prepared for us and the town uh, most definitely was not prepared for us. And we decided after many attempts to walk to the president's office and present a list of demands. And the demands consisted of textbooks, black professors, teachers, counselors, uh, and uh, our financial aid and our meal tickets and speakers to come up, black curriculum. And uh, we marched to Dempsey Hall and we sat down in a peaceful protest. But as we were walking, uh, there were close to 100 students, black students, and the people in the town started to call the police and we sat down and we presented our list of demands to President Giles. Uh, it ultimately led to our arrest, incarceration, and expulsion for 94 of the students. And after that, it was a hidden story. Nobody really talked about it. I didn't talk about it. Who was I gonna tell my story to? So it kind of festered inside of us and the town kept it a hidden secret because it was an embarrassment. But uh, 40 years later, there was a, a young historian, a professor, Dr. Stephen Kircher, that was in the, uh, he went to the um, uh, uh, attic of Dempsey Hall and he found these boxes of information, pictures, documents, letters. And he said, I kind of remember that there were uh, 94 students or more here, but what happened to him? He said, I bet you nobody knows this story. So he started to tell our story and uh, he did an oral history on us and, and we started to talk about it very slowly uh, so that the word would get out, but still a lot of people don't know. So 50 years later, our current uh, chancellor, uh, Andrew Levitt, Andy, will you raise your hand? Uh, dis decided to apologize uh, to us for the unjust and unfair treatment that we had. And there was a big event held uh, at the university. It was live streamed. There were thousands of people who uh, participated and he apologized to us and he gave us all the chancellor's medallion. And that is when the healing process started. So I wanna thank you and acknowledge you, uh, Chancellor Levitt, very much. And so today is another historic moment uh, in that uh, we're here for the first Juneteenth day we're being recognized and acknowledged. And uh, there is another um, uh, apology that is coming. I'm gonna uh, 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 introduce him in a moment. But I wanted to say thanks to uh, our, our two guests from Milwaukee that are helping to uh, uh, document things. We have Joan Williams and we have uh, Jeffrey Speller. I just wanted to give them a, a shout out. Thank you so much. And um, I'm gonna be missing someone, but I don't know who it might be. But I'd like to have Mark Roloff come. 
And uh, Mark Roloff is the city manager, and we've talked on the phone several times. And I'm so glad to be with him. I consider him an ally and friend as I do the chancellor. And uh, uh, he called me and he said, I think you want something from me. And we discussed what would help in the healing process of what happened on November 6, uh, 21st, 1968. So he has something to say uh, to the Oshkosh 94. Thank you, Dr. Knox. Yes, please, the members of the Oshkosh 94, please come up. Thank you, Dr. Knox. As, uh, as Dr. Knox mentioned, I'm Mark Roloff. I'm the city manager for the city of Oshkosh, and it's a pleasure and honor to be here today. Um, I'm representing both the city of Oshkosh as well as the Oshkosh Police Department. Uh, in advance of today's celebration, I had a wonderful conversation with Dr. Knox, uh, one of the Oshkosh 94 from 1968, and it was a pleasure to meet other members of the Oshkosh 94 today as well. I appreciate the time that Dr. Knox took to share with me uh, her very real experience and emotions that accompanied such a traumatic event in her life and those of the other members of the Oshkosh 94. I admire her courage and the courage of the entire Oshkosh 94 and her willingness to share uh, her experiences with me. After talking with Dr. Knox, it became more real to me, uh, the experience that, that they uh, had in uh, 1968. And it is clear that we as a community need to acknowledge the past and what happened on November 21st, 1968. Not just the specific incident, but the circumstances and the atmosphere that led to the student protest involving the Oshkosh 94. Sadly, Oshkosh at that time was less than a welcoming community. In fact, we were known as a sundown town. While I'm sure there were many people in Oshkosh who wanted to be welcoming, history shows that as a whole, we were not a welcoming community. And for that, we give an apology to the Oshkosh 94, those who preceded them and those who have followed them. Like many of you, I did not like many of you, I did not live in Oshkosh at the time of the incident, and I was only eight at that time. So mine and many others don't have the the knowledge, the direct knowledge. Uh, and although we may not have that direct knowledge, as humans, we can certainly appreciate what Dr. Knox and the Oshkosh 94 endured. The Oshkosh 94, you know, you see these mature adults. They were barely young adults at the time who were subjected to this unjust treatment. For those of us who have had or had children this age, we can empathize with how we and our own children would have felt had we been subjected to these harsh circumstances of arrest and incarceration. We need to acknowledge these feelings and how we can address these historical wrongs. We start by committing ourselves to learning and change. And that involves training for our employees in all our city departments, and we're doing that. It also starts by fostering trust and community engagement, and that's what part of today is. We need to ensure that we continue healing and reconciliation efforts. As a city, we want to be part of community-led initiatives, such as educational programs, like today's Juneteenth celebration, to promote understanding and unity. The city has a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee, and it's been charged with identifying these types of initiatives. And as the Oshkosh city manager, I'm committed to be a partner in these initiatives. Please look for our request for your participation from our diversity, equity, and inclusion committee in the future through the city's social media and our Oshkosh media in the near future. I, would, I do welcome your participation and your input. We need to hear from you. While we look to the future, it's important that we learn from the mistakes of our past. And that involves documenting and preserving our history. So it's wonderful that we have uh, folks documenting this today because uh, we want other people to hear about this. So much of what Dr. Knox told me was completely unknown to me. Uh, history was buried. Now it's being unearthed. And you have real people with real experiences. And these stories need to be told. And they also need to be preserved. And I've spoken with our uh, Oshkosh Public Museum, and they want to be part of that because this is a part of our history. Thank you for the opportunity for me to share this apology with you and have a hope for a better future for us, our children, and our community. Thank you. And Mark, I want to say that on behalf of the Oshkosh 94, uh, we accept your apology. 
Thank you. Thank you.